Foraging for mushrooms is an extreme sport. It may not be physically tough strolling through the forest looking for fungi, but it can be as dangerous as jumping off a mountain in a wingsuit. Make one small error of judgment and you could be dead. Which mushroom will become a delicious meal and which will end your life? Let's dive into the world's deadliest mushrooms. Hey, I'm Tasha the Amazon and you're watching Floralogic. Today we're plucking through the list of the most lethal mushrooms on the planet. There are currently about 14,000 known species of mushrooms. Of those, around 10% are considered edible, and most of the rest are inedible. The term inedible means they can be anything from straight up gross tasting to just giving you a mild tummy ache. The remaining 1-2% to of mushrooms are considered toxic. That means that they contain toxins that do a number on the human body, causing serious damage at best and death at worst. Hundreds of people a year around the globe die from eating toxic mushrooms. So, which ones are going to send you to an early grave? Let's go in with a bang and start with the most lethal of them all. This notorious mushy is responsible for the vast majority of toxic mushroom deaths a year. Amanita phylloides, otherwise known as death cap mushroom, is the deadliest mushroom in the whole wide world. It takes less than a half a cap of this unassuming mushroom to spell the end for a strapping adult. The life-ending powers of death caps have been known to us for thousands of years. Roman Emperor Claudius, by all accounts, was killed with a dose of death cap in 54 AD by his fourth wife Agrippina to make way for her son Nero to ascend to power. Identifying death caps can be tough because they go through so many changes during their short lifespans in the autumn. In their young button phase, they can be mistaken for edible varieties. They've been confused for harmless patty straw mushrooms and even juvenile puffballs. Death caps ooze with three different types of lethal toxins. The most deadly of them all, called amatoxin, causes liver failure, which can lead to death without swift action. Amatoxin isn't just contained in death caps, but a number of other deadly shrooms, and is responsible for 95% of mushroom-related deaths every year. Unfortunately for us humans, amatoxin is heat-stable, so cooking these toxic fungi won't make them any less deadly. Amatoxin poisoning isn't a quick death either. Think slow and agonizing. Six to 12 hours after ingestion, you'll get nausea and diarrhea. You may then start feeling better, thinking that the worst is behind you. But this short reprieve is just the amatoxin being absorbed by the lining of your intestines and making its way to annihilate your liver. From one to seven days after ingestion, these toxins scramble the functions of liver cells on a molecular level. In addition to liver failure, you may also experience kidney failure, brain dysfunction, and even death. Quick treatment with activated charcoal and IV fluids before the toxins make it to your liver is a must. A compound called silibinin, which plugs up the liver receptors that the amatoxin will eventually attack, can be effective if taken before the toxin makes it to the liver. Ultimately, a liver transplant may be the only option to pull you back from the brink of death. Recently, an imaging dye called indocyanine green was found to block the effects of amatoxin, so there's at least some hope that one day, the vast majority of these mushroom deaths will be avoidable. In its Amanita genus, the death cap isn't the only killer that packs amatoxin. There are a few species in this family known as destroying angels due to their ethereal white appearance and ability to kill. Much like the death cap, these types of mushrooms can be easily mistaken for edible varieties like meadow or button mushrooms, which is really what makes these destroying angels so destructive. There's European native species, Amanita verosa and Amanita verna, Amanita ocreata, found in Western North America, and Amanita bisporigera, native to Eastern North America, which is North America's most lethal shroom. Despite what the name suggests, Amanita isn't the only fungus genus that hosts amatoxin killers. There are other genera that are chock full of amatoxins too. Like this next amatoxin packed mushy that stole my supervillain name. The deadly dapperling, also known as Lepiota bruneo incarnata, can be found in Europe and parts of Asia. Like other amatoxin killers, deadly dapperling is highly dangerous for the human liver. Its inconspicuous appearance leads it to sometimes be accidentally mistaken for edible mushrooms like grey knight and fairy ring champignon. Gallerina autumnalis is a tiny brown fungus that grows on rotting wood and also packs an amatoxin punch. When it's ingested, it's usually confused with the edible Armillaria gallica, aka honey mushroom, or Flamulina volutipes, otherwise known as velvet stem mushroom. This one also looks a lot like psilocybe species, aka magic mushrooms, 
So that's another reason why this one inadvertently goes down the hatch. Another magic mushroom dupe, Conicide phalaris, is another demure-looking lawn mushroom native to the Pacific Northwest. It has a similar MO as the other amatoxin-containing fungi, a slow and painful march to the grave. You would think Toxic Amanita muscaria, otherwise known as fly agaric, fly amanita, or the super-recognizable toadstool, would contain liver-destroying amatoxin too, but nope. This is one mushroom species that contains different toxins that are equally hell-bent on human destruction. Toadstools are overflowing with asoxazole toxins, which attack the central nervous system and can send those who eat it into a coma. While highly deadly, toadstools actually rarely kill. This is probably because their red and white spotted caps serve as an adequate warning to stay the heck away. No one is going to mistake a warning light red toadstool for a harmless mushy. In addition to being toxic, toadstools are also psychoactive. So while you're on your way to seizures, coma, and maybe death, you may also experience hallucinations and delirium. In the Cortinarius genus, there are two species native to Northern Europe, deadly webcaps and fool's webcaps, that will do you in. They look suspiciously similar to other edible mushrooms, specifically the coveted winter chanterelle. So poisoning happens more than you'd hope. The toxin in these webcaps is called orolanin, which can take upwards of three weeks to show symptoms. By the time you have a proper diagnosis, it's already too late, and the damage to the kidneys is already done. You'll likely need a kidney transplant to survive. If left untreated, death will surely come a knocking. Podostroma cornudume is a rare Asian fungus of the Hypocreaceae family that contains trichothecene mycotoxin. Its unusual appearance leads it to sometimes being misidentified as antler Ganoderma lucidum, or even young cordyceps. The lethal toxin contained within this freaky-looking shroom can cause multiple organ failure. Symptoms of poisoning from this fungus are as spooky as it looks. Aside from the usual stomach pain, it also causes peeling skin, hair loss, liver necrosis, acute kidney failure, and ultimately death if left untreated. Nightmarish. False morals, like the species Gyromitra esculenta, look a lot like the wonderfully delicious true morals. But this fake species contains the toxin Gyromitrin, which when metabolized by the body becomes monomethylhydrazine, aka a toxic ingredient used in rocket fuel. While it will make you sick as a dog, death from eating this species is extremely rare. As a side note, you need to be careful when eating true morals too, since they can also make you sick to your stomach. Make sure they're thoroughly cooked before eating them and don't eat too many all at once. The fact that mushroom poisonings occur at all only speaks to our obsession with these delicious and sometimes psychoactive little fungi. If you're not a fan, you'll probably insist that 100% of mushrooms are inedible. If that's you, you may never know the pleasure of a fungi pizza, but you'll also never have to worry about an accidental mushroom death. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for new videos every week. Bye. If you liked this episode, check out our episode on cordyceps, the fungi that can kill through zombification. I'm Tasha the Amazon and you're watching Flora Logic. Today we're talking about cordyceps, a not so fun guy, at least not if you ask its helpless mind controlled victims. Cordyceps are a genus of over 500 parasitic fungi and can be found around the world, but are most predominant in warm, high humidity climates in Asia. Their spores enter their victims, insects and arthropods, and set up shop immediately. If bugs could scream, it would be too late. Some species of cordyceps use their power of mind control to turn their hosts into walking zombies hell-bent on doing their bidding. Nope, this isn't science fiction, it's science scary. But lucky for us humans, these type of mind controllers only prey on people in sci-fi movies and video games. Some of their closely related fungi cousins, the Ophiocordyceps, take it a step further. For Ophiocordyceps hosts, the relationship with their parasite couldn't be more toxic. As one species, Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, slowly takes over, it instructs the ant to act natural, tricking its colony mates into thinking everything's all right. That's the fungus equivalent of nothing to see here. When it's ready to spread, the cordyceps then compels the ant to climb up tall vegetation and give the north side of a twig or leaf a final bite, locking its jaw in a death grip. From here, the fruiting body of the fungus, also called the stromata, sprouts from the back of the dead ant's head 
and begins sprinkling the forest floor and the ants' colony mates below with even more zombifying spores. And so, the freaky cycle of mind control continues. The shape of these fruiting bodies is where cordyceps gets its Latin-rooted name. Cord, meaning club, and seps, meaning head. While most species of cordyceps prey on insects and spiders, in one study, 20 of them were found to attack heart's truffles, another type of fungi. The ancestors of these fungi parasites were parasites of cicada nymphs, which live in the same environments as heart's truffles. It was just a matter of time before they evolved to exploit this new resource. Adding parasitic cannibal to its list of descriptors definitely gives cordyceps a leg up in the world's most terrifying fungus contest. And these fungi have been contestants for a long, long time. Marks on fossilized leaves suggest that their mind control behavior may have evolved as much as 48 million years ago. Newer research is starting to change how we understand the zombification process. And we might need to find a better word for it. Scientists notice that ants' brains are left mostly unaffected, but tissue around the body is often replaced by the fungus mycelia. This means that the fungus might actually not take over the mind, but rather the body of the ant, and forces it to move against the ant's will. They might not be making zombies, they're making live puppets. In turn, humans have been using cordyceps for medicinal purposes for ages. For thousands of years, cordyceps have been used in Chinese and Tibetan traditional medicine. Ophiocordyceps sinensis, for example, is a medicinal species that sprouts exclusively from the head of ghost moth caterpillars and is only found at high altitudes in the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. Because of its rarity, it's prized as one of the most valuable ingredients in these medicinal traditions. Instead of zombies, this cordyceps took a page from a different horror novel and turns its victims into mummies. The resulting fungi host complex is then used for a variety of ailments like asthma and respiratory inflammation. Overharvesting of this species has put it on the endangered species list in China. Ophiocordyceps militaris, which is much easier to grow commercially, is often used as a cheaper alternative. One thing's for sure, mind control is not one of the side effects of cordyceps. At least not outside of science fiction. Humans are also finding ways to put cordyceps to good use outside of medicine. Currently, cordyceps are being investigated as eco-friendly pest killers for a variety of invasive baddies. So in a way, cordyceps are basically Dexter. Citrus crops, for example, are attacked by citrus leaf miners. While these pests have traditionally been effectively managed with the application of synthetic insecticides, the flip side is that these same chemicals have a big negative impact on predators and other insects. A lack of predators means it's basically open season for other harmful pests to come to the citrus feast. Introducing Cordyceps javanica, which parasitizes leaf miners, to the citrus battlefield is one way researchers are combating these pests naturally. In the fight against coconut root grub, which attacked the roots of coconut and other crops, spraying the ground with insecticides isn't a healthy option for anyone. So scientists are investigating species like Cordyceps militaris that naturally prey on these grubs to control their populations.